There were two big things that Disney wouldn't let go of for the longest time, and that was realistic talking animal movies and shoving those movies down our throats. G-Force was a high-budget movie released made to try to target Hamtaro and Mission Impossible fans. Big scary evil organization has a big scary thing and we need a special team to deal with it. Thank goodness the movie starts off with some actually good jokes. Hold on, this is a civilian passing through the perimeter. What are you looking at? Don't forget to sexualize the only female character in this movie. We gotta make more furries. Get them while they're young. I feel like this movie was a legitimately great cheesy movie that really anyone can enjoy. It came out in 2009 and it still holds up, even though there's some outdated music references. The perspective of tiny animal super spies is just done incredibly well. It really feels like a high tension spy movie. It's just guinea pigs, a mole, and a fly. It will awaken the chips already in the logic boards of all sable appliances, allowing this coffee machine to know how much coffee's been used, communicate with your home computer, and add coffee to your shopping list. This feels exactly what Amazon is trying to do today. Already, this movie was ahead of its time. The pigs get the super evil files from super evil villain. I think what makes these kind of movies so appealing isn't just cute furry creatures, but the fact that they're small, or, or really how everything around them is so big, it simulates what it's like to be a kid, always having to look up to adults, literally. It's really just filming from a kid's perspective. Men are like government bonds. They take way too long to mature. I love it when these writers add jokes for us to enjoy when we're older. I had no idea what that meant when I was a kid. I'm so glad I understand it now. What is a government bond? And that means I wouldn't be interested in you, even if I were. And this is embarrassing. Embarrassingly, where I learned Juarez is spelled with a J. So this one dude, Ben, is desperately trying to prove to the feds that his G-Force is actually worth their investment. And this guy, well, he's just a massive jerk. Project Clusterstorm was a coffee machine? Well, this isn't gonna impress the feds. I'm shutting you down. So the guinea pigs have to go into hiding before the feds turn them into rodent soup. Do not cross that line! Oh, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. And now we introduce the obligatory gross character because farts will never not be funny to kids. Oh, Grandpa, what is that? That's a hideous crime against nature, I'd say. <laughs> That's what people say to me when they find out I'm queer. The team gets split as Blaster and Juarez gets adopted. I gotta admit, this section is super boring, or it was super boring when I was a kid. I felt like they did a good job blending high action espionage with comedy. Now it's just comedy and it's messing with the pacing really bad. The story is now at a crawl and their mole is, uh, crushed to death. How family friendly. Oh God, boy, no, no, no. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it! This is what Ant-Man wishes it could be. Napalm Butt turns out to be Darwin's brother. Darwin has an internal crisis. Surprisingly, Ben and unnamed female co-star are actually doing something. I take a bite without the threat of you eating everything I have? Convenient escape hatch. Guys, we already have a problem with kids abusing guinea pigs. Now we're just giving them bad ideas. Blaster hitches a ride RC style. Let's rip off Shrek really quick. Juarez gives us a strip tease as they escape. Now for their greatest enemy, the coffee maker. Oh, that's actually kind of scary. What's that transformer called? We got the band back together, except for the mole because he's still dead. You're not genetically engineered, any of you. Should have never sent you out into the fields. Why would you tell them that now? And why would you even lie to them? More identity crisis. Pep Doc lets us move the plot forward. I tried to access the cluster swarm file on your PDA, but Saber, he protected it with some nasty virus. If that little thingamabob is all that like you say it is, why don't you just use that to destroy Saber's mainframe? But well, that could work. You're going to use the villain's own virus to destroy their own... Th I, I really don't think these writers understand what a mainframe is. All right, Autobots, roll out. We're finally getting back to super spy action. I guess they had to add a boring second act to save on budget. How many of you think that Disney was trying to mooch off the success of Spy Kids? And here is where you gotta admit, this is a cinematic masterpiece. We had a Fast and Furious for kids before the people just forgot about it. Blaster, I need to tell you something about Juarez. Oh. You have nothing to worry about. She's not interested in me. <laughs> Maybe she told you she wants me in order to look not interested in you. The chokehold that awkward love triangles have on literally everything will plague me until the end of time. 
It's a good thing I love them. Project Cluster Storm begins. You know, they never explained why they want to basically kill everyone with appliances. I guess we're moving away from the Spy Kids vibes and just ripping off Michael Bay's Transformers now. Over there. Marcy, let's go. Oh! Her name is Marcy. <laughs> the mole was the bad guy the whole time. I am the bad guy. The mole was the mole the whole time. I keep trying to tell you guys, cinematic masterpiece. Humans came and destroyed our home. If you ever get the chance to bring mankind to its knees, do it. They know this movie is cheesy and they're aging it to perfection. I hope you're into Gundam because this is a mecha anime now. Oh no, he dropped his pager. Hurley decides to be useful for once. Speckles, if you keep doing this, then you're no better than the humans who destroyed your home and your family. Well, that's kind of the point here. Thank you. I'm sick of all these villains and kids movies getting a redemption. It's just such a lame cop out. And I- Speckles, Ben took us in and he made us a family. No, what have I done? So he decides to have a redemption and they get the virus to the mainframe with us destroying all the evil robots. Just like them all, Hurley was only pretending to be dead. The G-Force is getting the recognition that they deserve. The government is happy with their work and they finish the movie with full medals. Their names will go down in history as a box office flop that will be forgotten one year after its release. Stay beautiful, ki- This movie made 300 million dollars? <laughs>